Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a brand new episode of your favorite podcast. I'm here with UFC heavyweight contender Jared the Mount Vendera. Jared, how you doing, my friend? Thank you for time. Uh, I'm tired. That's how I'm doing. I'm tired. Uh, I just got done uh, doing uh, two, three hours at King's. Uh, didn't I just didn't sleep well either. Uh, but that's just because I have insomnia and it was just kicking my ass last night. Insomnia sucks, man. That shit sucks. Like, yeah, I, I've had it all my life too. So I'm kind of like that too. I mean, I go to work in the morning, come home, rest for about a couple minutes, train, go to work, go to a gym, come back. It's about, it's around 12 a.m. and I'm not tired at all. I, I cannot sleep. I'm tired as fuck, but I cannot sleep. I don't know what. Oh yeah. yeah. I I hate when you're like physically just so exhausted. Yeah. Your like, your body is drained, but you your spirit and your mind is just racing. You're like, oh, yeah. we're up. Like, no, I want to go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Like I look at myself. I'm like, dude, it's one a.m. Just fucking sleep. I put the yeah, phone no, away, I'm... the Wi-Fi is off, the TV's off, the room is cold as fuck. Go to fucking sleep. It's not happening, man. I feel you. Like last night was just brutal. I only got maybe like four hours of sleep. Jesus, man. Um, that's fucking brutal. And I've taken pills, um, fucking C B D, I don't know, tea, everything. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way. It's just yeah. one. It's just one of those things. Like, fight week is kind of just rugged just because of that reason. Plus, I'm a picky bitch when it comes to beds. Uh, uh, The last fight I had, the beds were just god-awful. Like, it was close for me sleeping on the floor. And honestly, in hindsight, I should have slept on the floor. I threw out my back in one of those, like, one of the nights. I I literally got up, and I'm just like, like, I, like fight day, I was just, like my back was aching. I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I just thought my my first instinct wasn't bed. My first instinct was nerves. You know, because yeah. when you're nervous, shit just hurts for no fucking reason. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. your body trying to like, like you're trying to keep calm, but your body is like, no, you're nervous. Here, hurt here, and you're like, no, yeah, I want to sleep. I'm tired. Yeah. yeah, and like, yeah, like I, I'm a picky bitch when it comes to bed. I usually take my pillow if I'm going to fight. If I've got a fight coming up, and it's let's say on the other side of the world, I'm taking my pillows. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm my pillows. It has to be my pillows. Uh, I take my blanket. <laughs> uh, I I have a weighted blanket. It's like 40, 42 pounds or something like that. Oh, so so I'm not really judging. Uh, my, my girl takes her fucking pillow everywhere and she's not even a fighter. <laughs> yeah, pillows or, you know, the mattress, every, you know, it, you gotta be, you gotta feel comfortable when you go to sleep, but sometimes, yeah, it's brutal. But I've heard the news and you all, you, and you've got a fight coming up against a tough uh, Dan West Contender Series winner, uh, Cortez Agosto. Agost- Is that true? Are you fighting him? Yes, uh, October 29th uh, in Vegas. And how are you going to beat them? Beat them? Uh, honestly, uh, I feel like I have actually options here to beat them. Uh, like, like, the dude has the power. Okay, so like, let, let's not act like he, he doesn't have power and stuff, but I think that I bring more to the table. Uh, one thing that is good for him, but it's also a double-edged sword for him, is the fact that he's cranked out five, six fights in the last year or so. Yeah. So, so he he's he has the momentum, and you know he's very comfortable in, in the ring right now. Uh. So, but at the same time, I've had fucking already six fights in the UFC. Yeah. Six, seven. UFC. Six fights, yeah. Yeah. Uh in under two years in the UFC. And I know people that have been in the UFC for four years and only had three, four fights. So, so I mean, there, there's a comfort for both of us. Uh, 
despite the injury uh what I was going into uh with Chase, I'm doing better. Uh but I have also switched camps. So the I'm really enjoying the camp switch. Uh so far everything uh I've done there. I felt like I'm already improving dramatically. Uh, and I feel like the reason why is it's the honeymoon phase where, like, everything's new, new people, new coaching, new coaching strategies and stuff like that, that, you know, there's that honeymoon phase where everything's like, oh, yeah. so new, so amazing. Uh, but so I'm, I'm allowing that to, like, kind of kick in. But at the same time, I, I'm really – I like – take away the honeymoon phase i'm really liking just everything rafael is teaching uh all like all the students are bringing us uh, trying to uh, like just seeing how like benny dariush uh vittori and giga of Chicante all work they're very it just it's very fun to just see these high level guys in the gym constantly and it's just fun it's just a fun environment overall uh, you talked about injury. What was the injury? You know, you because of your, you know. No, I go. You can't have. We're gonna have your kids here. It's a friendly podcast. You know, it's a family friendly no. podcast. Yeah, but there, she's an attention hog, and she likes to try to steal the show. <laughs> I mean, you you're the man right here. I mean, who you're the man, man. You're you're the big dog oh, here. Oh, oh. Yeah, but someone likes her little five minutes of fame when she gets <laughs> it. Like, like if you watch her, uh, like my last video I posted, like I like to play with her and do little drills and stuff. Um, just kind of like more of a father figure versus the like being that head coach that she she sees at the gym. Uh, but like after we got done recording, she starts like, "Hi guys," I'm just like, "Calm down." <laughs> You know she's gonna um, be a, she's gonna be famous one day though, like that. I, honestly, because like I I'm like I am I, I I'm conflicted because I feel like my daughter would actually do really good YouTube stuff, but honestly the YouTube life like despite what people see yeah and like like when people see your podcast they're like oh it's easy da 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 da. There's a lot of hidden stuff that people yeah, do not see. Yeah, it's a grind. And, yeah, and I kind of want to do that for my daughter because I know it's something that she would enjoy, but it's like I have to really take – like I would have to do a hard balancing act that I'm not quite there yet to do for her. And maybe once the time's right, I would try to kind of make – do the whole YouTube thing with her. And, like, I don't want to, like – like I just want her to have fun with it, kind of get used to being be, being behind a camera and stuff like that, because it's it's kind of where society is slowly going. So I don't want her to be behind the curve of future technology, just because I I don't want because I want to be one of those parents like no, you shouldn't be behind a camera, blah 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 blah. Yeah. So, I mean, but where this society is going right now, like. Everybody's got their own fucking gender and shit. Like you seen what's going on on the fucking internet, man. Everybody's got their own genders. Everybody got got their own fucking pronouns. Some people they got you know the fucking uh, cat pronouns. I'm a cat. You got to meow to me. I, you seen that shit? I haven't. Like I know about the people and their pronouns. And honestly, I I genuinely just don't care. Just like, eh, you know, but. When you're going into different species, I'm yeah. like I have to draw a line somewhere. If you know, if you are a trans person and you want to be referred to a certain pronouns, fine, we we cool about that. But if you want to be like I'm a cat, okay, there, there's a line of sanity yeah. that I have to, you know, there's a certain level that I have to be like okay, like either I can't be around you. Or you gotta fix you, yourself. Or you're gonna have to work with us here. Yeah. Like we can't all jump on your bandwagon. Yeah. Just exactly. because you have your reality. 
Exactly. Like I saw a video. If I can't find it, I will send it to you. There was a clip of two guys. They were going. I don't know if it was Walmart or somewhere Target where you cannot where you cannot record videos. And she came. Uh, the uh, someone who worked there. She came up to them and like, you cannot record here. Put the camera down. And he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I identify as a camera. I identify as a camera." And she was like, "All right, do whatever you gotta do." Like. I don't know what to say to that, man. Oh, uh, yeah. No, uh, things are strange right now. But, I mean, there's a certain level of, like, give certain people the respect, especially if they are, you know, like, I can't tell someone what they're going through, but I'll try to give them respect. But there is a certain part of reality that it that we're not at the point where we could do interspecies cross-chain. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to call you a cat because you call yourself a cat. Was it? I mean, there's a certain level of like, okay. Hey. Yeah, like, I'm not going to mess myself in fucking public meowing at you or barking at you just because you're like, oh, I'm a cat. I'm a cat. Meow, meow, meow. Like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah like, uh, like yeah. there's that, just it's, it's just it's one of those things where like if if you have certain pronouns that are like acceptable and stuff like that where you're not necessarily trying to like go far far like weird preacher wise yeah, yeah I am fine with yeah. if you're like hey I don't identify as a man or a woman I prefer pronouns like zing zing some African I don't I'm not okay with that actually I'm actually not okay with that. Male or female, you want to transition from a woman to a man, fine. Man to a woman, fine. Anything other than that, I'm not okay with it, to be honest. The I, I'm I'm okay just because it it doesn't really affect me. But I don't like the idea of they have to like push the viewpoints. Yeah, if they ask me, cool. And I feel like they have to kind of understand that not everyone is around that and people are going to make mistakes. You shouldn't beat them over the head because they made a mistake Exactly. to a reality that you want. Because, like, okay, I get that there are people like that, but my reality is I'm a fighter. There are certain things that, like, when, when I was single – I was telling women that I was a fighter and they were like, oh, that's violent, that's aggressive. And and in a way, like to someone that's not in my realm, my reality, it's a very violent sport. But to fighters and stuff, a typical tube set. It's not violent, it's not gory, it's not that. And because of my reality being different than someone else's, like when I was told that I was a violent creature, I was a like barbarian because I fought. That is like that. I'm like, damn, that, that hurts. Yeah, it because hurts. Because yeah. un- it you don't understand it, and I do take that in consideration. I'm like, okay, they don't feel like they're man or woman. Okay, I will do my best yeah. to try to acknowledge them. Yeah, but I mean. I am a human. I will make mistakes. I'm not, but I'm not trying to be a dick to them. Uh, I try to show respect to everybody. Now, but respect goes both ways. If I am trying to give you respect and you basically... You respect, yeah, yeah, you got to give it back. Yeah, if you're not, then a lot of things can go out the door and I don't yeah. care. Yeah. All right, enough about that shit, you know, because people are so quick to cancel people right now and I mean, to be honest with you, in the last, let's say, year, I'm, I, my channel got around four copyright strikes and guideline strikes. If you get three in the same 90-day period, the channel is gone. So I'm really lucky with that. I am Ooh. so lucky. Yeah, like I made the video. My, I, made, I made all this stuff myself. Like I do the edits. I, I don't know, put the music on. I, and I'm, when I'm using the music, everything, I'm making sure that Hi, hi, hello, <laughs> hi. Yeah, doctor's appointment's happening. <laughs> hi, oh my god, look, I'm I'm so good with babies. I don't know why. I like I never had a baby brother or sister. Hi, 
they're overrated. <laughs> I've never had one. Don't, don't, don't. This is like, I don't know. Are you in a serious relationship? Um, I actually, yeah, kind of, kind of. It's getting there. All right. So give it a couple more months where they're like, oh, when are you guys going to have kids? When are you going to have babies? When did that? Oh, yeah. Slap friends of yours. Slap them. You don't need them. Keep that <laughs> negative away from you. If you want to be happy and enjoy your relationship, no kids. Yeah, I told my parents, they were like, you're the only child you got to give us some grandkids soon. I'm like, look, if I want to have kids, I'll do it after I'm done with my fighting career. And, you know, I have free time. I cannot be a fighter and have, let's say, four, two kids. I'm planning to have six kids or seven, maybe. I don't know. I like I like kids. But well, after I'm done with fighting, you know, but I'm financially there. I'm not going to have kids like what is how I'm 23 years old. You know, I'm not doing anything. I don't have a stable job, and I'm and I've got four kids. Like, what's a good what's good in that? Yeah, no, I feel you. Like, I like I I got lucky with uh, her mom. She she's you know very responsible, very well organized, especially with money. And so when we had our first one, she was very capable of you know we were able to manage. And do it. And I was kind of in the mid part of my career. Now having this one, I was in the UFC and it was a lot, you know, a lot easier to like deal with the baby. Yeah. But even babies are a lot. They're cute, they're adorable until yeah. you want to throw them away. Until, yeah. Until you wanna you have to change the diapers, you gotta go buy the food. Yeah. I don't mind changing diapers or feeding. It's the screaming for no reason. Like because they don't understand their emotions or what's happening. So, like, like she could be screaming, and it's like, okay, fed her, she's changed. I'm playing with her, she's going to play this way. She's tired. We try yeah. to take a nap. My dog barks, or my daughter <laughs> wants to play music very loud. So the nap gets disrupted. Now she's cranky and will not take a nap and just, yeah. Yeah. So you just changed my whole view on kids. I'm never gonna have kids. Maybe two. Maybe two. Yeah, a boy and yeah, a girl. Keep it. Keep it equal. Please, yeah. Please wait until you're older. Yeah. Like, yeah. After, like I said, I promised to my dad and my mom. I said, listen, I will have kids by the time I'm done with my career. I will become the champion or whatever happens in the future. When I'm done, I will give you grandkids. Whether whether it's yeah. they're my kids or I might adopt some kids. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm pro adopting. <laughs> yeah, adopt. Yeah, it, sometimes you know, you can't you either cannot have your kids or you know some situations where you just see a kid and you want to adopt that baby. You know that's like you see a dog in the shelter, like you want to adopt that dog. It's it's kind of the same thing, you know. Dog and human are kind of different, but yeah, it's a fair comparison. Despite what people say, like you can't compare a dog to a kid. Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I hate when uh, like parents they're like you cannot adopt. I'm like yeah you can. Like if if you see a kid and you are like like oh damn and then but like you go and actually meet the kid you and the wife and like like you guys could actually bond with the kid and you're like I'm gonna save a life like I'm gonna change this kid's life and the fo- foster system and adoption agencies aren't the best because they're over with kids with people having kids left and right so if you know someone adopts a kid i think that's awesome yeah like um me and the wife have talked if we ever have like like because the likelihood of me having all girls is skyrocketing (laughs) because i do so i like honestly she wants a boy i'm like the likelihood is if we spend a lot of money to get the one sperm to have a boy, or I'm like, I'm for adopting. I uh, like yeah. because I almost got put in the foster care system when I was younger. Uh, I was kind of raised by my grandma, she almost fully adopted me, so I understand like the crazies a bit of the crazier side of it. So I'm definitely more open to adopting. So, yeah, adopting is but, good, adopt, yeah, adopt babies. It's all right. So Let's get, I want to take you back. I'm going to take you into my time machine. Let's get you back before you started your MMA career. 
what made you fight? What made you, you know, become this fighter? Uh, honestly, it was just kind of one of those things that I kind of fell into. Uh, I grew up literally just fighting. Like, I remember my sister's cousin. Uh, me and him fought as children. Like, literally, we would fight so much. We would beat each other up uh, as kids. Fast forward in high school, I was wrestling and stuff. And, I, I you know, in middle school, I, I was always getting in fights. So it was just one of those things where fighting just happened. And, yeah, that's where I'm at. No, no, no. No, 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 oh my because... god, kids! Oh my god, <laughs> all right, continue, please. Man, I'm... I laugh, uh, it... I laugh very easily. All right, continue, please. I just, I fell, uh, I just fell into fighting, like it was just one of those things where after wrestling, all everyone was like, What are you going to do uh, after school? and I was just like after wrestling season and I had an injury right after wrestling season got healed up and I walked into an MMA gym and I enjoyed it. And that's a pretty good story. I mean, that's kind of, some people, you know, they start with a wrestling background. And speaking of wrestling, are you going to use your wrestling this way? Kind of not to give out your game plan or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, uh, I, right now, with Kings, I'm doing everything more. Yeah. I'm wrestling more, I'm striking more, I'm jiu more, I'm on the fence a lot more. I'm just doing everything more. And honestly, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not used to doing so much all the time. But I'm like, okay, I see why when people talk about Vittori, Giga Shikante, Nazareth, like, these guys are good because they're having good training sessions. You got Rafael, who is a phenomenal coach that makes you go into bad positions and all that stuff. So there's a possibility that I might wrestle just because I'm doing it more. Yeah. So, um, and speaking of, you know, Benil Darius and Kings MMA, he's got a fight coming up with Gamrod, with Mateusz Gamrod. A little prediction on that, please. Uh, who who is it? Uh, yeah, Benil Benil Daryush um, oh, and yeah. Mateusz Gamrot. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know who he's. I knew he was fighting. I just didn't know who he was fighting. Uh, I, I mean, I gotta go Benny just because that's yeah. the boy, you know. Yeah. Like he he's a sweetheart. I, I honestly I like I just I like his presence the most. I talk to him daily, predominantly. Um. So yeah, no, I, I and honestly, I get a lot of hard work uh, training with Benny. Uh, so I, it, it, I see why he's still ranked number four. Yeah, he's one of the best lightweights ever, and possibly would win. He can get a title shot. And this weekend, UFC two seventy eight predictions for that one. This is a great fight card. All right, I only know the main event, and I. I'm, I know I'm forgetting like the co-main. Like there's some big fights on this card. I'm just drawing a blink on. Uh, but I, I I might be leaning towards Edwards. I have to lean towards Edwards. My co-host, who's not here, he could not make it. He is Irish, but he lives in England. So I have to go with the British fighters as well. I mean, I love Leon Edwards. He's a great fighter. But if I don't go with British fighters, he can he. I don't know what he does. He kind of like morphs into the phone and comes slap slaps me. I don't know how he does that. He's a like mentally slapped with a mental slap. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. try. Yeah, I'm gonna get that kid one day. One day. <laughs> but no, I don't know. I like Usman has the ability to win. Like, like I'm not acting like he's. It's going. I think it's gonna be a five round decision. Yeah, me uh, too. I, I think Edwards just might be a better striker. And if he could land more and be uh, cutting more angles, if he could do two or three rounds where he could do that, where Usman can't, you know, strike him and hold him to the fence, um, I think he has a chance of winning. That is awesome. And Jed, it's been more than 20 minutes. I know you 
don't have a lot of times. So I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. Um, anything else you want to say? Shout out to sp your sponsors or, you know, any anything you want to say before we end this? Uh, just thank you for having me and thank you everyone for listening and watching. I'm sorry for my children being loud. It's all right, man. It's all right. I love having a little diversity in, in, you know, in, the, in the room. Yeah, thank you so much and good luck in your next fight. I'm going to bet on you. The money's on you, my man. Go get that finish. Get that 50K as well. And good luck. And we'll see you guys next episode. And by the way, since I didn't, I didn't tell you this story, I failed seven subjects out of 11 in school. So I've got a little test coming up. I've got these tests coming up the, next week. So I'm, I'm, for the viewers, I'm not going to be doing a show for a while. Uh, Jared, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Good luck in the next fight. Um, we'll see you guys later, I guess, if, I'm, if I come out of this alive.